You may not have been exposed to the new coronavirus, but you've almost certainly been exposed to an adjacent contagion. Maybe you've even helped spread it. I'm talking, of course, about social media, about the posts that we see on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, some of which will come from news organizations or qualified medical professionals, but a lot of which comes from ordinary people on the street expressing their fears and posting photos of empty supermarket shelves where there should be, for example, hand sanitizer. This is a new phenomenon. 10 years ago, the last time we had a pandemic fear with the swine flu, Facebook had just 360 million users. Fast forward to 2020, and it has 2.5 billion. According to the Pew Research Center, 57% of Americans think that the news they see on social media is largely inaccurate. It means that people, when they're fed information through social media, aren't entirely sure what they can trust. And that makes it hard for medical authorities to cut through the noise. When the Spanish flu took hold 100 years ago, it wasn't called the Spanish flu because it originated in Spain. It was simply that that was where the first reporting happened in any great depth. News of the virus wasn't initially widely reported in the UK, US, France, or Germany, partly as a hangover from the censorship of the First World War. There's a strand of social thought called contagion theory, which looks at the way the ideas spread, sometimes irrationally, in large groups. Some social theorists assert that the way social media works is by exploiting our emotions. Facebook invites you to respond to a post with an emoji. Like, love, laughter, amazement, anger, crying. These are emotions that you broadcast out to your followers and invite them to do the same. The effect of posting a picture of people queuing to buy toilet roll or hand sanitizer is similar. You're prompted to ask yourself whether you should be doing the same. It's addressing you on an emotional rather than a rational register. Nobody is going to shut Facebook down, nor should Facebook be blocking photos that might accentuate the panic. But we as individuals do need to think carefully about whether the content we're posting is helpful or whether it's just feeding the frenzy. I'm Alex Webb for Bloomberg Opinion, and I'm hoping this isn't just contributing to the noise.